What's up guys, Jimmy from Mountain Bike Travel Lead here again. Gonna do a little tutorial for you guys. I'm actually replacing my RockShox Monarch with the Vivid Air RC2. Uh, pretty excited about this one. I'm a decent rider, getting better every day, uh, but bike mechanics are not my strong suit, so I figure while I learn, I'll teach you guys as well. Uh, so this should be a pretty straightforward switch over. So let's get started. First things first, I learned this little trick online to keep my rear triangle in place. I'm just gonna take a couple of these zip ties here and I'm actually gonna weave them through the rear connector there, around the tube here, and then I'm just gonna tighten this through. This is gonna be a temporary fix and basically what this is going to allow me to do is to remove the shock without the rear triangle wanting to fold in on me. So that's gonna hold that right there. So now I can go ahead and take out the bolts. I'm just gonna use, for my bike, it's a six millimeter Allen key. There you go. All right, now we got one half done. All we have to do is go to the other side. There's another little six millimeter bolt. There you go. Now we have the Monarch taken off. The next step here is going to be removing the hardware that I have in the RockShox Monarch and switching it over to the Vivid Air. Uh, luckily for me, the hardware is going to be the same. Uh, if you do need to replace the hardware on your shock or need to switch out your hardware, you can easily do it online. You know, basically the big things you're going to be looking for is your bolt diameter. The diameter of the bolt that actually goes through the shock to mount it onto the frame. For mine, it's an eight millimeter. And then what you're gonna to need to know is the width. Basically what you're gonna be looking for is the space in between these two points where the shock is going to sit. So for me, mine is 22.2 millimeters, which allows that to sit in there without any play. Now, since I already know that mine are the proper size, all I'm gonna to need to do is remove the hardware from each end here and then the tough part is actually going to be getting this now this is the width you're looking for so if you do buy the hardware this is the width that you're talking about so mine is 22.2 but I need to find a way to press this out of here since it's been on there for a while it's a little tight for this one I actually got lucky it looks like I can pull it out most of the way but again I don't have many fancy bike tools around so all I'm gonna do is take a little socket key here this key is big enough to push this piece out but it's not big enough as to, to start pushing that bushing out there so I'll just lay this down try to do something soft give it a few knocks and that will actually just fall right out one thing you want to be sure of is you really want to make sure that you don't scratch this surface. That's going to ruin everything about the shock. We'll do the same thing on the other end. So the next thing you want to check, I mean if you have a brand new shock it should be fine, but you want to make sure that you check the bushings. So if you look at these bushings, Basically what you're gonna see is that it still has that inner film, it's nice and smooth, doesn't look worn. So I really don't have to worry much about that. If you do need to replace your bushings, it's a pretty simple process. I mean, you'll basically just need a press device to push them out and then pop your other ones back in. Basically all I'll need to do now, slide or switch the hardware over since it matches right up. They're both RockShox, pretty easy. Take a little of my fill grease there love this stuff really quality grease you just want to get a little bit inside the bushing there just so everything slides on nice now that we have that all i should need to do take this guy that's going to slide right in there just like that you can wipe off any any excess grease you have there that'll go right in the middle 
And these, the newer models, some of them have pieces that actually slide into the bushing. Mine just go right around the edge there. Pop both those on, make sure that they are going the right way. And there you go, there's one end. Hardware should be good to install. Same thing on the other end. And there we go. Again, for me, this is super easy. The hardware is basically the same for both of my shocks. For you, you might have to do a little research or buy new hardware or bushings, but now we should be good to go there. We got the Vivid Air, we got the hardware installed. So all we should need to do now is strap this bad boy on and then I'll Vivid Air with the hardware installed. And then we have our eight millimeter bolts that are gonna hold it in place. I threw a little fill grease on there. You can also use anti-seize. You wanna make sure that they don't get stuck in there. And we can throw this bad boy on. So to put it on, it's basically gonna be the same way that you took it off. Now you want this to be tight. You don't want it to be to the point that you're never gonna be able to get off again. So I'd say bring it till it's snug and then we give it one more good turn. So that's nice and snug. One more good turn, just so that we know it's not gonna move at all. And there we go. We have our beautiful RockShock Vivid Air hooked onto the Bronson. So now we just gotta get it all set up. We can now cut the zip tie strap there, take that right off. We're all set. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this video helped you out. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos every Monday.